Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin here and welcome to my review of the LG V10. The release of the LG V10 kind of caught me by surprise and I didn't follow the rumors or anything about it, but when LG reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to check it out, I was all in. At first I wasn't really sure where this would fit in LG's lineup, but I would say that this is their premium actual top of the line smartphone. But at the same time, I would call it LG's ambitious or experimental smartphone, where they have tested out new things such as a second display, which is almost always on, as well as dual front-facing cameras, one that is wider than the other. The reason why I would call it premium is that it has metal bands running around the side, and it just looks extremely elegant. The device also comes in at 5.7 inches. It features a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with a PPI of 515. In case you're wondering, the second display has a measurement of 2.1 inches and comes in at a resolution of 1040 by 160, which is pretty respectable for such a small display. The device itself measures in at 8.6 millimeters thick, and although on camera it doesn't look very big, the second that I took it out of the box, I realized this device is huge. It comes in at 159.6 millimeters tall and 79 millimeters wide. Another thing I noticed is that as soon as I took it out of the box, the metal on the sides felt amazing. It had a nice cold touch to it. The device features a removable plastic back and it does have a nice textured feel to it to add a little bit of grip to your device. The LG G4 for example was a pretty slippery phone. You'll also find your buttons located on the back which is pretty classic with LG devices and I actually really like it, as well as your 16 megapixel camera. Of course, I'm going to spend more time talking about the second display later in this video, but from looking at it, it is something that is pretty useful, but in the end, it is pretty much like what Samsung did with their edge display in terms of the concept. But I actually like it more because it doesn't curve over the edge of your device and is kind of a display that complements your main display instead of taking over a bit of it. On the bottom and throughout the device, pretty much all the ports are what you would expect and pretty standard. You have a micro USB port on the bottom as well as your 3.5mm headphone jack, speaker and microphone on the other side. But now moving on to the display, this features a huge 5.7 inch display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 That brings you to a very respectable PPI of 515 and what can I say, it looks great. Though after using some devices such as the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, I did notice that the display just wasn't as bright as the one on the Note 5, but I'm sure no one will complain about that. The colors are great and are pretty natural in my opinion, but as you can see here, the blacks are very strong, and that just adds some great contrast to the image. Another thing to comment on is that the bezels on LG devices historically have been very thin, and that just makes the video experience very immersive. So I'm sure with anyone who decides to pick up this smartphone, you will love the display on the V10. When it comes to the software, the LG V10 runs Android 5.1 Lollipop with LG's UI of course. And I've got to be honest with you, even though I have come to enjoy it much more over the past few years, I'm still not really the biggest fan of it at all compared to other skins. But that's really just my personal preference. Everything is very snappy and responsive as you would expect out of this smartphone which is run by the Snapdragon 808 processor which is octa-core and powered by 4GB of RAM. Despite my Korean variant being loaded with a whole bunch of bloatware, the device didn't have any hiccups anywhere at all. And with 4GB of RAM and such a big screen real estate, you were able to take advantage of stuff like the dual window, no problem. The notification tab stays pretty much the same with your quick toggle settings, the brightness and volume toggles, so if you have owned an LG device in the past, you'll be right at home. The same of course can be said about the settings menu, whether you have it in the categorized view or in a list view, everything is where you need it and I don't really have a major problem with the LG interface aside from the fact that I'm not the biggest fan of the visual aspect of it. But in terms of the fluidity and the way the device just operated in general, it was a very pleasant experience. When it comes to the second window on the top, it seemed as if at first everyone was wondering what was the point of that and whether they should have just made the display bigger in general and have the two cameras located on the top bar. The display itself is already very big at 5.7 inches and I have found some uses for this dual window. As you can see, the camera app does utilize it. So without having the buttons taking up spots on your main display and your viewfinder, you could toggle things from the top. 
It also allows you to access your most recently used apps in a click, but other than that, it just displays a signature with your name. So hopefully LG continues to find ways to utilize this second screen. The camera on the LG V10 was one of the most talked about things about this smartphone. As you know in the YouTube tech community, a lot of people like to record videos on their smartphone. But the catch is, it wasn't about the 16 megapixel camera which was also found on the G4 which is great by the way, but it was the fact that you can actually have manual recording settings in the video mode, which was only present in the photo mode of the G4. So this just really unleashes a whole bunch of things you were able to do with this camera. And here's just a look at some of the photos and videos I captured on the LG V10. From looking at the photos that the LG V10 was able to produce, I have to say it looks great and that is just what I expected after using the LG G4 earlier this year. The sharpness is very present with that 16 megapixel camera and the colors really do ring out. There is a little bit of artificial saturation to it. Though it isn't too much to the point that it is extremely noticeable and the image almost looks fake. One thing I noticed, however, is that the photos were inconsistent to a degree. It seemed like every five photos I get, I'd have one that I wasn't too happy with. But if you do take the time to take the right photo and focus on the right spots, which it does very well with its laser autofocus, you were able to get a great shot out of the LG V10. Now moving on to the front facing cameras, and like I mentioned earlier in the video, this does have two front facing cameras. There is actually one that is wider than the other and I'm really not sure why. It could have made sense for them just to have that one wide camera, but either way, the quality that both of them were able to produce is pretty good for a front facing camera. So now we're on to the video quality of the LG V10, which of course is 4K, but the special feature is that you have manual video settings. The videos you see here are exposure that I set myself and I think it looks great. So I think the video on the LG V10 is the best that I've experienced on any smartphone just because I have full control over it. I know I didn't include as many samples as I would have liked to in this review, but look out for a dedicated camera video coming up. On the V10 you've also got a 3000 mAh removable battery and that is one of the things that a lot of smartphones have started to phase out in return for better design. I think it's great that LG has kept it and the design really doesn't suffer at all in my opinion. With the buttons being located on the back, this device looks seamless as hell. From my experience, the battery life was pretty good, I was easily able to get through a day and at first I thought that the second display would kind of hurt the battery life, in which I would have probably disabled it, but it really didn't. But the biggest part is the ability to swap out the batteries is a huge plus for any user out there. The last thing I'd like to touch on is the speaker of the LG V10, and you can see on this phone it is just a small little cutout located on the bottom, which usually indicates it's not going to be a great speaker, but as you can hear from the audio test here, it is pretty loud, and although it isn't the quality of the HTC One M9 of course, it does sound Pretty good actually. I found that the highs just really rang out and sounded great. But other than that, this has just been my review of the LG V10 and I have to say I actually really enjoy using this smartphone and if you do follow a lot of the tech community on Twitter, I'm not the only one who thinks that. I love the way it's designed, the device feels great in the hand despite having a huge 5.7 inch display, the camera looks amazing, and the overall performance was worthy of a flagship smartphone. That being said, some of its experimental features such as the second display and the dual camera aren't really must haves, but I have to say I did enjoy that second display. But other than that, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'd like to pass a huge thanks to LG for sending us out for reviewing purposes, and I'll see you all in the next video.